I found another thing that Stable Diffusion is unreasonably good at. It does particle system textures really well. So particle systems are often used for special effects in video games. So basically if you see a waterfall or if you see like a flaming sword or anything really, a lot of times those are particle systems. So for indie devs, the textures for these particle systems can be a little bit hard to come by. So you might want a very particular style. And so just going into Google and trying to find that style of particle can be really challenging. And it's also just really fun to play with because you can just create these really weird special effects very easily. So as a practical example, I've been working on this game using AI assets and I got to the combat section and one of the problems that I ran into is it just like wasn't very exciting. So, and this had a lot to do with the fact that I didn't have any special effects. So that's what's drawn me to this topic of using AI assets. And you wouldn't expect them to have that good of a result because I'm really just trying with this game to be as pure with the AI assets as I can be, as, but it actually gives some really good results. <laughs> It also gave some really boring results, but like stable diffusion is so fast. This does like the bad results don't really matter. If you wanted to follow along, I put some links in the description. We're going to be starting with a Google Colab. So with that, we have to start up an instance. And once an instance is running, we have to load up an image. And we're going to be using this particle image that we got from Stable Diffusion. And then we'll be running all of these commands. You're going to have to have a Hugging Faces account for this particular workflow. So once you ran all these commands, it should start producing some AI images. So the main parameter that you're probably going to have to play with is the strength parameter. And a lot of times it's kind of inversely related to how how noisy your image that you're putting in is. So if you have an already very messy image, then if you have a low strength value, that'll still give you really interesting results. But if you just have like dots or something that's like really plain in the input image, then that means that you'll need to have a much higher strength value. And so those two things are kind of oppositely related. Yeah, and you can kind of just go wild with the prompts. It's stable diffusion after all. <laughs> I put together a web app so that you can demo these pretty easily. So basically that's just at this GitHub page and you can just upload the images and then that'll give you an idea of what they'll look like. A lot of particle systems in different softwares operate differently. So you probably also wanna try it in whatever software you're going to be using. Uh, but yeah, this is a really quick way of seeing how crazy these things start looking very easily. Um, and it can give you an idea of what types of shapes are good. So whether you wanna have something that is just like a full circular object or having a bunch of smaller objects or even things like lines can end up looking really interesting. Let's go over how to use these particle textures in Blender and Unity very quickly. In Blender, particle systems are a modifier. So you have to have some sort of object that you'll add this modifier to, and then that basically acts as the source. And in order to get the actual texture loaded up, we're going to want to add an object to it. So we will add a plane, and then the plane will we will add a material to, and that material will be our texture that we're using. And then that plane is going to be attached to the particle system. And so we have to scale it appropriately and we'll still have the black background. And in order to get rid of the background, we'll use shaders. We'll use our image texture, a transparent material, a diffuse material, and a color ramp. We will move the image texture into the color ramp and the diffuse material, and then we'll set it so that the black gets converted to transparency, and we'll use a mixer shader to combine these together, and that'll remove the background inside of cycles. One thing you have to be a little bit careful with with particle systems and cycles is that you can really easily end up getting systems that are super complex for cycles to render. This is one of those situations that can like light your GPU on fire, so just be a little bit careful with that. Unity is a little bit more straightforward. Particle systems are game objects, so you can just add them to your scene, and then you have to work with the texture and material. So you can just import your texture, and then you can create a new material, and that material you can add the albedo as the texture, and that will texture the material with the texture. And then you can change the shader that the material is using. I found that the mobile particles works really well for converting the background to the alpha channel. The other thing that's cool with this setup is that since you're not using something like cycles that will burn our computer into pieces, you can end up setting the particles really high and getting some really interesting results that way. But it's really interesting to get an idea of the kind of the scope and it's good for playing around with it. And then Unity is also just like where you probably would want to use a lot of these particle systems because of games and whatnot. So. So while working on the AR component of particle systems, I came across a really fun math problem. And okay, so I like this particular problem, the main issue with it is actually just converting a, or an English problem into a math problem. And that's something that's oftentimes like a really challenging thing to do. So I'm just going to pose it as an English question to start off with. And then I'm curious on whether you'll have the same read in terms of a math sense as I do. The basic question is, so when we have some sort of AR scene and we have these shaders, the shaders will orient towards the top of the phone. So they'll orient with 
the actual screen space so they follow the tilt of the phone whereas if ideally if you have some sort of fire you have some sort of shader you really want it to follow the global scene and so you need some way of canceling out this tilting effect there's a bunch of ways of doing this but like that's the english problem that like that is before we do any sort of math conversion and i'm really curious on whether you will have the same read of okay so my read of the situation is that it's really just a geometry problem between the global y-axis and the local y-axis so my solution is just to use a unit probe from the local reference frame and then project that into the global reference frame and then take an angle between that projected unit vector so basically you start with a unit vector you apply the camera's quaternion to it so that's the same as a matrix rotation and then you just take the y component of that and then you take the a sign of it so like it, it's one of those things where like the math ends up being really simple but to convert it from an english i don't know i like there's just so many ways that you could go about this problem that i always just think it's really interesting to think about how you go about solving these english to math problems because you could also take some sort of euler angle approach or there's a bunch of other ways that you could approach this problem but my method seem to work reasonably well and yeah I'm, I'm curious if you came up with a different idea because i just you don't i i feel like i haven't come across a good math problem in a while <laughs> So this is basically where I got with the arrow trail. So I wanted to add in a kind of directionality to the particle system. And so that took a little bit of work. And yeah, this is kind of the current place that I'm at. The fire circle is giving me really big Doctor Strange vibes. And like, because portals are such a common thing in AR, like, oh, that's interesting. But that's definitely a future. That is not a now project. That is a future project. <laughs> And the thing that's really cool about this is that I can now switch out the types of arrow effects very easily. Like I can switch out between frost and like flower patterns and hearts and all these other types of things. And it's really easy to convert between the effects that like this just like wouldn't be possible by just like Google searching a bunch and like trying to gather a bunch of different images together. But now you can really easily swap between effects and they're all just like custom made too. So you can do whatever you like. I just the the scope of it is amazing. Like I, it's just it's crazy what started to be possible it's i don't know i'm just it's crazy how everything thing i seem to try seems to work like it's been a long time since i've had that experience <laughs> The code for this project is going to be up on GitHub. A large contributor to the original code is Simon Devs. So like a lot of this is based on the work from another YouTuber called Simon Devs. So thanks to him. And yeah, thanks and have a great day.